Now, I want to end the lecture by telling you something astonishing. I won't always be able to tell you something astonishing in every lecture, but one of the great privileges of teaching introductory biology or being in an intro bio class is that there are certain big things that never get discussed again. Okay? This is one of them. We are continuous with non-life. Here's how I'm going to convince you of that. Think of your mother. Now think of her mother. Now think of your mother's mother's mother. Now I want you to go through a process like you've done in math where you do an inductive proof. You just go back. Just let that process go, okay? Back you go in time. Speed it up now, okay? We're back at 10 million. Now we're at 100 million. Now we're at a billion years. Now we're at 3.9 billion years. Every step of the way, there has been a parent. 3.9 billion years ago, something extremely interesting happens. You pass through the origin of life, and there's no parent anymore. At that point, you are connected to abiotic matter. Now, this means that not only does the tree of life connect you to all the living things on the planet, but the origin of life connects you to the entire universe. That's a deep thought. Every element in your body, which is heavier than iron, and you need a number of them, was synthesized in, in a, no, in a uh, supernova. The planet that you're sitting on is a secondary recycling of supernova material. And your bodies are constructed of that stuff, and they use it in some of their most important processes. So. The vision that evolutionary biology gives you is not only the practical one of how to think about and analyze how and why questions in biology. It's also a more general statement about the human condition, and I hope it's one that you'll have time to reflect on. Next time, we'll do basic genetics. <laughs>